let's take a look at how the shape of a molecule affects intermolecular forces. So intermolecular forces are the attraction between molecules. So, so far we've been looking at the shape, the structure of the individual molecule. Now we're going to look at the attraction between separate molecules. What's important to remember throughout this is that positive and negative attract. So positives and negatives are going to attract each other. So these are going to come closer to each other. They're going to want to stick together. So if we look at different bonds, ionic bonds are going to stick together the most because you have a fully positive and a fully negative charge. So this is, you know, most sticky. In the middle here, we have our polar covalent. There's a partially positive and partially negative charge. So molecules of this will be attracted to other molecules of hydrogen, uh, of hydrochloric acid. So hydrogen and chlorine here. Hydrogen uh, bound to hydrogen, it's nonpolar, equal sharing of electrons. So these are not gonna stick to each other very much at all. And we actually see how this affects their behavior. So sodium chloride, that's table salt. We typically see that as a solid at room temperature. Hydrogen, we see that as hydrogen gas. And it's very, very difficult to get it to stick to each other to make liquids or solids. Just a little example of how you know this this works. So if we have a dipole, so we have a po partial positive or a partial negative charge, this is dipole-dipole attraction. So you see that the partial negative of this chloride is going to be attracted to the partial positive of this hydrogen. So these are going to be attracted to each other. They're not actually bonded. They're just attracted to each other. There's also a special type of dipole-dipole attraction in hydrogen bonding. So where you have nitrogen or oxygen, bound to hydrogen here, and it's a very strong dipole attraction. This is part of the explanation of how water behaves, and you'll get into that much more extensively if you study anything in biology or biochemistry. It's important to realize, though, that hydrogen bond is just a dipole attraction. It's not a real bond. Uh, it's kind of a misnomer. So it's not a real bond. Dispersion shows us how uh, molecules of nonpolar compounds are attracted. So nonpolar compounds still have this dispersion force where, you know, just by random chance, there might be a very, very, very slight temporary dipole, a very slight positive, very slight negative, and it would attract something else that also has a slight positive or slight negative. This is why it's still possible to turn nonpolar compounds um, into liquids or solids, but it's still a very weak force. This is very weak. So this actually affects the melting point of different compounds. If we look at the melting points here, we can see the melting point of our ionic compounds, lithium chloride, beryllium chloride, um, sodium chloride, magnesium chloride. Notice they're so much higher. They're 610, 405, 800 as opposed to calcium, so our, our carbon tetrachloride here, which has a negative 23. Um, you see the same patterns with our boiling points. Because the attraction is so high that it's um, very hard to melt these and even harder to boil them. The compounds that are nonpolar or even polar covalent 
are going to have a, a less attraction between them, and so they're going to melt easier, so at a lower temperature, and they're going to boil much easier.